Hi, welcome to Watercolorish. Today we're going to talk about stretching paper. We're going to stretch a full sheet of this Arsh 140 pound hot press, which is my favorite paper. It's very durable and very smooth. People that don't like to stretch paper will use 300 pound because it's thicker and doesn't ripple as much when it gets super wet. But I've found the 300 pound is not as smooth, even in the hot press, as 140 pound for whatever reason. And as you can see, my work is very detailed. This is one of my watercolors right here. And I need very smooth paper to get all these little details in there. So. You may have an artist friend or talk to a well-meaning art store employee who will tell you that painting on a watercolor block is the same as painting on stretch paper. But I'm here to tell you they are all living a lie. A watercolor block is just a pad that's gummed on all four sides, but it's still just a stack of paper. It's not stretched on anything, so it will ripple if it gets super wet. So let's get right to stretching paper. I'll show you how it's done. You'll need some wide craft tape, otherwise known as watercolor tape, which is pre-gummed for your convenience, and you'll need a big soft sponge like this sea sponge I've been using for the past 30 years. This is one of my big drawing boards for full sheets of 22 by 30 inch paper. Uh, it's birch paneled. I've also got a smaller drawing board that I'm gonna use. Uh, it's got pop tarts on the back for some reason that I can't recall. So watercolor paper has a front side and a back side, which you can tell by the watermark. If the watermark's backwards, you're looking at the back side. And of course, this one looks like it's got the vendor sticker on the front, which is annoying. I usually write a letter B on the back side every 10 inches or so on a sheet that I'm going to cut so that once I lose track of the watermark, um, I can still tell which is the front on each of the smaller pieces. You can just use scissors to cut this, by the way. The edges don't need to be straight at this point. So to begin stretching our small sheet of paper, we lay it face down on the drawing board and then get the sponge really, really wet. You want to be sure it's completely soft so that no hard, dry corners or edges will scratch the paper's surface. And then we just put on a generous amount of water and get the whole backside of that paper nice and evenly wet. Not swimming, not floating away, but you want it to have a nice, even, wet sheen all over. So before I flip the sheet completely over, because it's a very hot, dry day here in Southern California, I'm gonna get the drawing board kind of wet too. Uh, that will help the paper stick to the surface and keep it from peeling up, which it's already trying to do, as you can see how the, the corners are very curly. Uh, that means it's gonna to wanna to detach from the drawing board. So with that moisture underneath, that'll help it stick and stay flat, which is what we want. So I move the sponge mostly from the center of the paper towards the corners and the edges to help it flatten out and to help remove any air bubbles that form underneath. Now what's gonna happen as the paper absorbs more and more moisture over the next five minutes or so is that air bubbles will form again. You can see one right there along the edge. I'm, I'm just gonna flatten that out. Well, didn't really flatten that much, but you don't wanna get too obsessive, like that one in the middle. It's probably a lost cause, uh, but that one's getting bigger, so we can definitely make that smaller and uh, get rid of its neighbors too. You don't want to wear the paper out with excessive sponging uh, while you're stretching, but you also want to keep it relatively flat. You can kind of burp the corners like that and flatten them out again. That's fine. And then you kind of want to stop sponging eventually and just let it rest for a bit and it will gradually wrinkle up again. But while we're waiting, I'm gonna go ahead and start pre-tearing the tape we're gonna to use to hold the edges. You need a piece that's about one to two inches longer than each side. So I'll do the long ones first, and then the two short ones. So this drawing board is half inch plywood uh, my other uh, larger drawing board that I showed you before is three quarter inch plywood and I've painted the edges with gesso to prevent them from absorbing moisture. You really don't want to stretch paper on one of those masonite drawing boards that students use because they will bend like a pretzel. As you just saw, I was flattening out some of the bubbles there, but mostly by this point in the process, I'm just letting it rest. The wet paper will expand to its maximum size about five to ten minutes after you first get it wet, and that's when you want to start applying the tape. So this has not been exactly real time. I've cut out some of the dead air in hopes that it will not be too tedious. 
If you see someone's kicking the camera stand there as they walk past. I'm doing this in the house because that's where the water is. My studio doesn't have water. So I just did a last flattening out and now I'm going to get the tape nice and wet with the sponge like so before I put it on. I'll line it up along the edge and then move it over so that half the tape is over the paper and the other half is sticking to the drawing board. At this point, and from this point forward, I'm not going to touch the paper at all. We're done flattening out the paper with the sponge. I'm not going to touch it with my fingers. I'm just going to touch the tape, which we get nice and wet each piece. And then the order of operations is short side, long side, long side, short side. That helps a little bit with the flattening out. It probably doesn't make as much difference with a small piece of paper like this, but it's more significant if you're stretching a full sheet. By the way, those full sheets of Arsh watercolor paper seem to be better quality than the paper that comes on a pad or a block or on a roll. I'm not sure why that should be. Someone's kicking my camera stand again. Life under quarantine. That's why there's no ambient sound in this clip either. So there was a lot of talking. Good times. So I'm using my fingernails to press the edges down and just be sure the tape has a really firm grip on the drawing board. If the paper's too wet, the tape can sort of float off the paper. And if that happens, you can use a paper towel to wick away some of that extra water and then press the tape back down again and just keep doing that until it starts to stick. So I'm speeding up this section because it's just a little too exciting to watch in real time all this pressing the tape down, pressing the tape down. That's just one of my hobbies, pressing the tape down. Now, you can see five minutes later, the paper has buckled quite a lot. That's because I put the tape on a little too soon, but it's not a disaster, even though it looks like a disaster. All we gotta do is, you guessed it, push the tape down. I'm just gonna make sure the tape is sticking. When this thing dries, it will flatten out. See, this is what it looks like the next day. About 24 hours later, it is so flat. That is the flattest piece of paper you'll ever see, and it will not ripple or buckle when you get it wet while you're painting. So the process for stretching a full-size Arsh 22 by 30 inch watercolor sheet is similar, except as you can see, I get the paper wet in the shower with cold water. It's just the fastest way for me to get a big piece of paper like that soaking wet and then I just lay it down after checking the watermark to be sure which side is up. Uh, there is a slight difference in texture between the front and back side of Arsh watercolor paper because they're mold made. The back side's just a little lumpier, a little more uneven. You really need a magnifying glass to notice the difference, but you would notice it when you're painting on it. And you can paint on it, it's just uh, the results are a little more unpredictable. So now I'm just flattening the paper out, working mostly from the center towards the edges and corners as we did with the smaller piece. It's just a little bigger job with this much larger piece of paper. I'm speeding up this part once again so it's not quite so tedious. One other benefit of sponging the paper surface like this is that it removes some of the gelatin sizing that protects the paper and which resists penetration by water so that the paper fibers untangle just a little bit and the paper relaxes a little bit, which makes it more receptive to smooth, even washes. Whereas if you don't stretch paper and you just start painting directly on that sizing, then the water tends to bead on the surface rather than soaking in as readily and you get more hard drying lines and not so much softness. Now I'm gonna start measuring out the tape so that each piece is a few inches longer than the corresponding side. And I'll start putting the tape on, starting with one of the short sides. And this piece of tape actually is a little bit damaged from previous water exposure, so I'm going to double it just with another piece that overlaps. Be sure it doesn't come loose. Be careful not to put your tape roll down on a wet spot on the table. That's uh, probably how that happened. So short side, long side, long side, short side once again. This paper is lying nice and flat. 
and as it dries it's going to shrink which is going to cause it to tighten and stay flat no matter how wet you get it while you're painting so you are good to go no rippling when you've finished your painting use a utility knife or other sharp knife to cut carefully along the edge of your painting just run it through the tape using the outside edge of the paper as a guide on all four sides like so and then I do a couple extra cuts at the corner where I'm going to start pulling it off just to make that easier and you can use the knife blade you know to pry the paper up a little bit it doesn't matter if you damage the corner that's covered with tape since we're going to cut that part off anyway and then those tape covered edges you can just cut off with a paper cutter if you have one I have a really nice one by Road Trim that makes a cool shooshing sound which I like better than that. or you can use a mat cutter or just scissors so once you've cut the tape off the edges you're done you've got a beautiful watercolor you can show your friends and tell them what an expert you are now in stretching paper and what a difference it's made in your life because your washes are washier your colors are brighter and life is good but there is one thing we forgot to go over which is what to do with your drawing board to get the rest of the tape off and that is to get it kind of wet I pour the water along the edges and then set a timer for six minutes and then come back and do the same thing again and wait another five to six minutes and then it should start to come off pretty easily you can just peel it off or scrape it off with the paint scraping tool and if you get to a trouble spot where it's not coming off easily just soak it again wait another five to six minutes and come back and eventually it just turns into kind of a gelatinous goo which you can just wipe off with your fingers. Um, as a last step, I clean it with an abrasive scouring pad like you'd use for dishes, but use a clean one without any soap residue on it. And then that's it. You're ready to start a new watercolor painting on this board. Thanks for watching and please subscribe to Watercolorish if you'd like to see more tips and tricks to improve your own watercolor practice. See you later.